Do you want to spend less time editing your C-Log and C-Log 3 footage without the whole thing looking like dog shit when you're done? Well, you've come to the right place. This is part two that's going to teach you how to edit your C-Log 3 footage really, really quickly. We're going to skip all the fat and get straight to it. So let's do it. Cash money get up, big show stopper for kids having no chain rocker. Make my business work my business. Count them. My name is Joe, and welcome to Cameras and Tech. Or should I say, welcome back. A lot of you are returning viewers. We've had a slight uptick in subscribers over the last couple months, as well as a lot more viewership. We have two videos that have accrued over five or six thousand views, which is beyond me because it's only my first couple of videos. But that just shows me that people are finding my videos to be pretty useful. Uh, my goal from the very beginning has been to create content that is very digestible, that goes straight to the point of giving the advice that I wish that I had when I had first started filmmaking. This video is most likely gonna be the most useful to beginners, people looking to find a new way or a way of color correcting their footage when they've been just taking way too long or not getting the results that they want, especially with C-Log3. A lot of the concepts you can apply to a lot of different other types of log, but this particular series is for Canon log. And let's be honest, you don't always have all the time in the world to sit there and color correct and color grade all of your footage. In a perfect world, you get as much time as you need to be creative, but in the real world, we all have deadlines that we need to work with. Quick and consistently good looking footage can be achievable in a short amount of time. And this has been a cornerstone of a lot of the workflow that I've used over the years. It doesn't matter which editing program you choose, um, the idea is that you are going to use several really basic steps, which almost every video editor should have the ability to do. The application of LUTs and a few very, very simple uh, slider adjustments, and your footage should be looking pretty good, especially if you followed the previous video. Exposure and white balance. This is key. Getting your exposure and white balance correct in camera is extremely key in being able to edit the footage in this way. The closer you get to having the footage exposed correctly, the better saturation and colors you're going to have as an end product. If you haven't already, watch my expose or how to expose C-Log3 footage uh, video that I posted right before this, it should be watched as a foundational video to this one. If you already are pretty good with your exposure, then you can forget it and just go straight into this editing portion. And one more thing, with white balance, I don't think I had mentioned that too much in the video before, but white balance is one of those things that's baked into your Canon log footage when you're finished. So make sure you have the correct white balance. Correct meaning it's as warm or as cool as you would like for it to be. I tend to lean towards the warmer side of the footage. I like my footage warmer anyway. Having it at a good point helps you have to edit a little bit less in the end. And there's limitations into how much you can change the color temperature when you're doing your edits in your editing program. If you go too far away from how it was shot, the footage starts to look a little weird. So that's just a warning. Just make sure if you're shooting with more than one camera, make sure you have the same or similar white balances so you can get them close in post, or just at least pick the one with the one camera that you really feel like the final edit should have. The very first step is to go to Canon's website uh, you can look it up on Google. Uh, I usually start with Canon R6 because that's how I found it in the past. Go to the support tab and then software. If you select your operating system, 
it should pop up with a couple different selections and a Canon lookup table will be somewhere in the top three or four. And that folder will provide you with all the LUTs that allow for Canon log to be converted into the color space that you need. For today, we're just gonna go over Rec 709. And if you don't know what that is already, that's okay. Rec 709 is a basic color space that's used for television and movies. Um, there's also BT 2020, which is really popular now for high dynamic range. But if you shot in Canon C Log 3, and you don't really know about any of this stuff, you, you wanna choose the, the 3D LUT, the 3D LUT folder within the zip file and find Canon Log 3 to BT709. That will give you the color space that we're working with today. And once you have that, you want to make sure you nail down a process to apply this LUT to your footage. And it's different for every editing program but it's very, very simple. I've used it in both Final Cut and Premiere. So I'll briefly go over Final Cut, but in Premiere, it's not significantly different. It's one of the editing tools that you have uh, where you just look up a root file. Just remember where the file is and select the right one. Don't worry too much about choosing the wrong one. If you choose the wrong one, it won't look right. But if you choose the right one and you apply it to the footage that you expose correctly and it's C log three or C log, whatever it may be, the footage will come out looking pretty good already. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now, uh, selecting it and applying it on Final Cut. And in Final Cut, we have the advantage of having the LUT baked into the application. So you don't necessarily have to download it if you don't want to. It's, uh, it's actually within the program itself. And as you can see, I'm using clips from before that I've shot. And honestly, once you apply the LUTs, it's actually looking pretty good. In certain circumstances, you can kind of run with this the way it is. Okay, the next two steps I'll combine using scopes and using sliders. Scopes are pretty important tool because when you look at a screen, you may not be able to distinguish what is clipped and what's not. You may be guessing or your screen may be showing you something and it might not be, but the application itself should have accessible scopes to allow you to know whether the footage is clipping, meaning it the highlights are blowing out or the shadows are bottoming out. Um, again, these might be creative choices for later on, but for our purposes today, you really kind of don't want the highlights to blow out or the shadows to bottom out. So for most applications, if you don't already know how to find your scopes, you can always go into the help tab at the top and look up video scopes or scopes it should point you in the right direction. And once you have it, you wanna pull up the histogram. Now, the histogram is a super basic scope graph, I don't know what you wanna call it, that is used in photography and other types of imaging that shows you where all the light is and how the exposure is with throughout your image. The good thing with log is that there's far more information than if you were to shoot in standard profile, meaning you can pull back a lot of shadows that you might have missed if you shot in standard profile or non-log footage, like one of the colors are already in, you can always tell because the non-log footage is already saturated right off the bat. The log footage is very gray because it's trying to hold together as much information as possible. And now you're opening it back up by pulling the sliders and applying LUT. So, once you have your histogram open, you can see where the exposure for your footage is. It goes from zero to 100, and 100 being the edge of being overexposed, and zero is where the blacks are and the shadows bottom out. And I'm just gonna do a quick couple of tweaks to the footage, and uh, you can view the histogram as it changes as well gonna pull the shadows down just a little bit so they reach the edge and I'm gonna pull the highlights up just a touch as well it gives you more contrast in the uh, image 
and we'll play around with the midtones as well. We'll move up and down till it gets to the point where I like. I tend to pull it down just a touch, but it really just depends on how you expose your footage. Again, if you expose it correctly, the midtones are going to look really, really nice. And that looks about good to me. The next and final slider we're going to go to is saturation. For the purposes of this, we want to make sure the saturation gets to a point where not where you like it, but where it's closest to real life. And that's where you want to go with color correction. If you're going to go ahead and just go forward with your uh, creative edit, you might as well just uniformly pull up your, your saturation and do your shadows the way that you want. I like to color correct it to real life or make it look as close to real life as possible. So that's pretty much it. You have really good looking footage with just a few steps. If you're interested in how I begin my creative edit, I can make a video about that as well. Things like color theory and where you should begin when you think about changing your footage around a little bit. Again, it's very subjective, so it's tough to make a tutorial on how to creatively edit your video. It's much easier to make a video on how to correct your video. So in closing, if you nail your exposure and then you follow these quick steps on how to edit your video, there's no reason why you can't get attractive, good looking footage with just a few steps. This has saved me so much time in the past doing things this way. Uh, sometimes I get to a point where I don't really need more of a creative edit for videos. Um, some footage is not meant to be too stylistic and when I get to this point and it's nice and sharp and saturated, it's, a lot of times it's really good to go already. It saves you possibly hours of correcting, especially if you follow the steps from beginning to end. Uh, there's no reason why your footage shouldn't look good. I just repeated myself. I don't like that. Comment below with any questions you may come across or if you have any suggestions for future videos, I would love to hear it. I'll try and respond to every single comment. Um, thanks again for all the traffic. Uh, it's a really good motivator to continue shooting these videos. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.